1995. We're in 2009. Do your maths. How many years? Are, I, I, the first time when I stepped into South Bank University, I used to come one year, come the next year, come the next year. Same person talking about jihad. I said, you were talking about jihad for four years. You're in your final year degree, still talking about jihad. Why are you sitting here? Culture, culture, hadith. The man was eating a date. And then he said, then he said oh, if I wait to finish off this date, and I will lose. So he went to the battle and became martyred. You waited four years to get a degree in economics to do what? Talking about jihad and you're sitting here? What's this preaching to others? What, you want everyone else to go and you want to stay? Then, he, then some of them will say, yeah, but someone's got to call the people to jihad. It's got to be you. Whilst you're sitting in a mixed sex university talking to people and women and all, the, all types of stuff, and you want to tell everyone else to go and kill themselves while you're sitting here? Yes, jihad is, jihad is something which is real. It is serious. It's not a joke. Companions were killed and slaughtered. How many of nations of Muslims in jihad, armies that have gone out to war, died in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hey, you want to sit with your 18-year-old self and tell me about jihad and give verdicts about jihad because you read something on the internet or because something made you, made you angry on the news of 10? This is not our way, ya ikhwan. It is clear that from these hadith, point that jihad has changed and why isn't there emphasis? There is emphasis upon jihad. When Ibn Qayyim speaks about jihad, where does Ibn Qayyim begin in Zad al-Ma'ad upon jihad? You great in Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Qayyim. <coughs> Shaykh al-Islam, ya ikhwan. An alim, hardly the dunya has seen the likes of this scholar. He speaks about jihad and the levels of jihad. What is the first level of jihad that he mentioned? Then what's the second? What's the third and what's the fourth? Talk to me about jihad with the sword. You want to talk about qital? And you haven't, you don't even know the levels of jihad? The jihad of ilm, ya ikhwan, first level of jihad. Secondly, the jihad against the shahawat and the shubahat, which is the jihad against shaitan. Then the jihad against the, against the kuffar and the munafiqeen. Jihad, ya ikhwan. And the jihad against ahlul bid'ah. And this jihad and all of these levels of jihad also have levels within them. There is the jihad of the tongue. There is the jihad of the tongue, there is the jihad of the hands, there is the jihad of the heart, the hadith in Sahih Muslim. When the Prophet said, whoever makes jihad against them, those who change that which the companions of the prophets were upon, and they, and they speak, and they were not asked to speak, and they speak with ignorance. The Prophet said, whoever makes jihad against them with his, with his hand, excuse me, with his hand, then he is a believer. Whoever makes jihad against them with his tongue, he is a believer. Whoever makes jihad against them with his heart, he is a believer. But there is jihad of the heart. The Prophet ﷺ said the best jihad a person can perform is the jihad that he makes against, him, against himself in obedience to Allah. Is there jihad upon the battlefield? Yes, there is. Of course there is. There is jihad upon the battlefield. But when you are called, when you are called, you sit here, you don't know Tawheed, you never studied a book of Tawheed or Aqeedah in your life, and all you want to do is run around following these emails. Of course, those individuals, they're on the internet. You know, because all they do all day long. Read this article in, you know, I read this article in the CNN <coughs> about how Muslims are being slaughtered in Gaza. Spread it to how many people you can. Why not spread Tawheed? Which is the greater reward? Which is the greater reward? Spreading Tawheed and calling the people to the worship of Allah or mention the people, the oppression of Muslims. Look what Shaykh al-Fawzan, the wisdom of the ulama. He said you shouldn't spread photographs and images of slaughtered Muslims in the Muslim lands. What? What's he on about? Does he want us to know the truth? Of course he wants you to know the truth. What did he say? He said, why? Because it weakens the resolve of the Muslims. Secondly, it is haram to take pictures unless there is a, unless there is a great need for it. It weakens the resolve of the Muslims. It makes the Muslims think that they have no honor, no respect. And it spreads weakness amongst the ranks of the Muslims. What are we going to do? Send them to despair. This is not the way of the Muslim, Ya Ikhwan. There's wisdom in what the ulama they say. Wisdom. If the one who rebels against the, against the leader to implement the Sharia, so is Muawiyah a Khariji of Ali? This is Jahl. Muawiyah is a Khariji against Ali? Only a Shaitan would say this. Why? Because Muawiyah is a known companion. Radiallahu anhu wa radu an. You making a comment or you're asking me? Does it look like a question? It's like you're trying to come to me with, with information and say, therefore, the battle between between Muawiyah and Ali, therefore Muawiyah was Khariji against Ali. How do you know? He was Khariji against Ali. How do you know he rebelled against Ali? The ulama, if you read the books of Aqidah, you would know the ruling with regard to that which takes place between the Sahaba. 
that which takes place between the Sahaba, keep your mouth zipped. Prophet ﷺ said, when my Sahaba are mentioned, stay quiet. Don't mention the slips of the Sahaba. Secondly, how do you know? It was Muawiyah who, who rebelled against Ali. Some of the Salaf of this Ummah used to say that both of them are rewarded. In fact, all of the ulama hold both of them are rewarded. I'll tell you what they say about Muawiyah in a moment. They say both of them are rewarded. Ali is rewarded and Muawiyah is rewarded. Why? It's the jahal of those individuals who don't understand these issues. Why? Because when an alim makes a judgment, the Prophet said a hadith in Sayyid al-Bukhari. When a judge makes ishtihad, and he strives to come to a ruling. If he's right, he gets two rewards. If he's wrong, he gets one reward. Both of them, Ya Ikhwan, are rewarded. The one who was right gets two rewards. The one who was wrong gets one reward. That's the reality. Then some of the Salaf used to say, I will not venture to say who between Ali and Muawiyah got two and who between Ali and Muawiyah got one reward. But I will say both of them are rewarded. Some of the Salaf, they said, and some of the ulama, of the early times, they used to say that Ali was rewarded because he was right and Muawiyah was wrong. But Muawiyah is rewarded also even though he may have been wrong. <coughs> this is the position of Ahlul Sunnah. Because when the Sahaba behaved like this with each other, due to the, if, due to the infection of the Munafiqeen, who come into the ranks of the Muslims trying to cause havoc between them, then this type of situation occurs. So this happened, Talha and Zubair were killed at the Battle of the Jaman between Ali and Aisha. Are oh, we going to say Ali was, Aisha was Kharji against Ali? No. We say this was a matter of ijtihad. Ali did not accuse Muawiyah of being a Kharji, nor did, nor did Muawiyah accuse Ali of being a Kharji. So what are you trying to say? Because your question from, from both sides is corrupted. Because if you say that Muawiyah is a Kharji of Ali, then where's your Salaf for saying that? Where, which Ali in the dunya, except for a, except for a wicked Shi'i, would say and make a comment like that? That Muawiyah was a Khariji against Ali. No one has ever said that in history. No book of Aqeedah says that. And if you say that he was a Khariji against Ali, then what you're saying is that he made khuruj against Ali and he rebelled against Ali. No one says that about Muawiyah and the battle between Muawiyah and Ali. Muawiyah was a dispute that took place between two companions, both of them seeking the truth. Both of them, one of them washing, wishing that the, that the greater good of Islam be spread. And that was, and that was Ali. He wished that, you know, we don't, let's not dwell, dwell upon the assassination of Uthman. Let's move forward and, and strengthen the, 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 the Islamic Ummah and the, and the Islamic nation. Muawiyah was, no, let us find the killers of Uthman. Many of the people they gave bay'ah to Muawiyah in Damascus. Many of the people they gave bay'ah to Ali in Medina. This happened between them. So both of them were given a rule. But when the battle took place, neither of them accused the other of innovation. Rather, the Khawarij came out of the army of Ali. And Ali fought against them, Muawiyah fought against them, Yazid fought against them, Abdul Malik fought against them, Marwan fought against them, and the rulers till this day have not stopped fighting against them. These Khawarij. And this is the type of statements they come with. Hussein and Yazid. Same statement. This is your ignorance of history. Because Yazid did never send anyone to go and kill Hussein. This was the ishtihad of Hussein, to go out and do what he did. We say that if he is right, two. If he's wrong, one. And the companions used to advise Hussein, don't go out. Don't go out. This is ishtihad. We do not take, wallahi, in their history. Look what Ibn Abbas said about Abu Bakr and Umar. <coughs> Look what he said when some of the people came to Ibn Abbas. And they said to him, what do you say about the Hajj? Do we combine the Umrah into the Hajj? What do we and then he gave the ruling about regarding Hajj to Matu which is the Hajj that combines the Umrah and the Hajj. They said, but Abu Bakr and Umar used to say something else. He said, Allahu Akbar. He said, Allah is great. I say to you that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said such and such, and you say to me, but Abu Bakr and Umar, I fear that rock will rain down upon your heads from the sky. That I say to you that the Prophet Sallallahu said something, and you contradict it with the, with, with but Abu Bakr and but Umar. This is Sahaba among Sahaba. That you do not use these, these mistakes or these conflicts that took place between the companions as a proof of your deviation. Never. So when one companion criticized another companion, this used to happen, they were human, but they were the best of mankind. But when one companion criticized another companion, what are you going to do? Are you going to criticize that companion? 